When I was a kid in the late 50s and early 60s, my grandfather lived just a few houses away. He had an entire basement for a workshop, and he would often make toys and gadgets for his grandchildren. One of the things he made for me was a toy electric motor. I still have that motor, and it still works. The motor has four permanent magnets mounted in the wooden rotor. The rotor spins on a brass shaft. There are four hand-wound coils mounted on the base that line up with the magnets. The four coils are wired in series, so they all turn on and off at the same time. The interrupter for the coils is a square nut that is attached to the brass shaft. As the rotor turns, the square nut deflects a strip of brass that makes or breaks a contact to an iron screw. This switches the magnets on and off, allowing the coils to repel the permanent magnets at the right time to keep the motor running. The only problem with this interrupter is that the contact points spark a lot, corroding the iron screw and the brass strip. They need to be cleaned and adjusted frequently. A few years ago, I decided to make an updated replica of this motor. I wanted ball bearings on the rotor, stronger magnets, and most importantly, electronic switching for the coils. If possible, I used off-the-shelf items rather than having to make them myself. I've included a parts list in the comments section. The rotor is a 6-inch nylon pulley mounted on 1 quarter inch aluminum rod. Mounted ball bearings are used to hold the vertical shaft. Four small samarium cobalt magnets in plastic blocks are attached to the rotor. The coils of magnet wire, 200 foot each, 24 gauge, had to be carefully unwound from their spools to get access to the end of the wire, and then rewound. They were mounted on wooden blocks and an, an iron bolt was added to focus the magnetic field. The interrupter was made from a section of aluminum flashing with four wings of about 45 degrees. When the aluminum wing passes under the IR reflective object sensor, the sensor activates and sends power to its coil repelling the permanent magnet close to it. For demonstration purposes, I added an LED to show the coil energizing when the wing is under the sensor. The coil pushes the magnet away and then is shut off before the next magnet reaches the coil, allowing the rotor to spin freely until the next cycle. The motor has two independent coils, controlled separately. The second coil is positioned 135 degrees from the first one, so that one coil can activate every 45 degrees of rotor rotation. The sensors are mounted on wooden arms that can be swung away, deactivating its coil. That way, the motor can be run on either coil or both at the same time. Here's the schematic of the coil switching circuit. The reflective object sensor is an IR LED plus a phototransistor mounted in the same package. I use an 8 amp Darlington transistor to drive the coil and I used a rectifier diode across the coil to suppress back EMF from the coil. My grandfather also built a different kind of motor for my brother. It looked like a small steam engine, 
but it had two magnetic coils where the piston and cylinder would have been. Sadly, that marvelous toy has been lost, but I remember enough of it to build a replica. Here, the rotor flywheel is mounted with a horizontal axle, and a small crankshaft is added to have the pistons turn it. Each piston is a magnetic solenoid with a one-inch stroke. The interrupter electronics is the same as for my other motor, except I use discrete IR LEDs and phototransistors. In retrospect, two simple optical interrupters would have worked just as well. For the timing element, I used a disc of black construction paper with a 90 degree wedge cut out. The magnetic solenoid pulls the crank arm at the right time to power the motor and then shuts off for the remainder of the cycle. The other solenoid fires 180 degrees out of phase. I appreciate that my grandfather took the time to show me how to build working mechanical and electrical devices. It's a skill that I used in my career as well as in hobbies even today.